been part of the Top Energy Water Safe and Simple Life program. Um, over the years, obviously, our resources have evolved, and now I'd like to navigate you through the website school resources that we've been able to put together for you. If you haven't already received it, in the mail you'll receive a OzSwim DVD. For, for those that have attended the OzSwim One Day program with me, you would have already received a manual. This will complement the manual. The great thing about this DVD is it can be broken down into your strokes. So for your older children, say maybe years 5 to years 8, if they're wanting to have a look at the body position, you can play it on body position, have a look at the arm action, leg action, etc. So really good visual aids for your older children. So I just want to refer you to the tab. On your videos, you will have those directions of how to get into the website. And of course, we've got some passwords. So the first thing you need to do is go onto the Sport Northland homepage, which is www.sportnorthland.co.nz. So once you're in the main page, then you click onto Active and Healthy, and you click on Sim for Life. It will then bring you up to the tab for school resources. Then click on that, and that will give you a password. The password is WaterSafe2012, all lowercase. And from there, you go straight to the home page. Once you're on school resources, as you can see, you will have a whole lot of tabs. The top two tabs are the ones that we pay for external providers. So we've been able to secure funding to be able to provide licenses for each of your schools. I must say that if you try to log on all at the same time, it does time out, so you may need to look at a schedule. First one I'd like to go through is your OzSwim games and activities. When it comes up, it will ask for your username, which I have mentioned is on your tab. So the username is numbers, so you just need to enter the numbers in, as well as the password. The username and password is the same for the Smart Moves Lesson Planner as well. So if we just click on the heading, you can see that we've got a variety of games and activities for beginner, intermediate and advanced levels. The PDF, so you just click on whichever level that you're working with in your school. Just for example, we'll click on Boat Race, it's a PDF. And this is how it will look. So you'll be able to see the ability level, all the information that you need, the skill groups that you're working with within that game. But we'll then go on to the method and adaptions. So these are adaptions to either make it harder or easier as you go along. Smart moves. So we've been able to create a curriculum, and within that curriculum, we've then be able to put activities and then create lesson plans for you as teachers. What we've been able to do is hopefully make it as easy as possible for you to follow. So I'm just going to enter in. Great. So here you can see the front page. I'm just gonna refer you to the help and user guide. So in this tab, you will see the level of achievement guide. So this will show you the six levels that we've created. We've basically gone from level one, the children that do, you know, unhappy about getting in the water, to level six, which are your club swimmers. As you can see in the level guide, you'll see where your child would be starting from. So what, giving you some ideas of what they would demonstrate to be in a level. And then the next box over is what the child can master and achieve to be able to move on to the next level. I am going to be working on assessment sheets for these levels as well as linking it to the PE curriculum. Once your children have completed the levels, you're able to then access some certificates, which will be in PDF form that you'll be able to print off be able to present to your swimmers. 
So if we go back to my home page, you'll be able to see here we've got eight year folders. Within those year folders will be levels. I'm just going to show you, for example, year three. So in year three, we've got four levels. I've worked it out on that there's a certain level which the children can achieve, ones that may be a wee bit um, unconfident and then ones that could be advanced. So you've got a variety. Within the lesson planner itself, there's over 330 lesson plans. So just for example, let's have a look at level two. So that's year three, level two. And you'll see that there's 10 lessons that will come up. So there's 10 lessons in each of those levels. The lesson templates are all the same. As in, you will be able to see that they bring up the today's skills, the equipment that you need for that lesson. Always has a safe entry. The main activity block is today's skills then there's survival skills and a safety message at the bottom. So I'll just quickly go through so you can see. Within these lesson plans, there are a lot of activities as well as games. And the reason why we did this is because we know that if you've got a group or a whole class full of boys, they're not wanting to learn structured activities. They're going to learn by playing games. So the games that we put into the lesson plans uh, teaching the skills that we're trying to achieve as well. If you're wanting to know more information regarding the activity, you can just click onto activity details and it will bring up the full overview which will show some progressions in it, a must-see criteria, as well as some keywords and some group management. As you can see here, we are able to add videos and photos. Uh, this will obviously be a bit of a process and that we'll be working on in the next months. So if we just go back, these activities, uh, sorry, lesson plans can then be printed off and taken to on pool site. So as you can see here, there is a lot of activities and games. Survival skills has always got something to, to do with either survival sculling, treading water, uh, rope rescue, reach through rescues, etc. And finishing off with the safety message. So as you can see, they have answers as well. So I'm hoping that you're going to enjoy the lesson plan planner. Um, we believe that it will help you to make it easier to be able to teach swimming. Just bring you back to the main page again. So the next tabs below are PDFs. So I'll just quickly go through each one. The first one is class strategies. This covers ability grouping in your swimming program, how to establish a ability group, and then how to deliver to the abilities group. The level achievement tab here will have your level guide for the lesson planner in there as well. And that's where I will put the assessment sheets as well as the links to the PE curriculum. For those teachers that are more of a visual teacher, I've put together some progressional flow charts. All of these marry up to the lesson planner, so all the level ones relate well. As you can see here, you're probably already looking at about three abilities within your class. All you need to do is just follow the flow chart. It gives you some examples of some activities and then it will be able to show you when you're able to move on. We have done this for entry, submersion, floating, sculling, as well as all the strokes, including your survival strokes as well. Teaching plans. So we've put together a few teaching plans. And as you can see here, you'll be able to see this is for breaststroke, what they can do, where to next, learning intentions, possible success criteria, as well as acts of teaching. Again, those are for submersion, floating, and your strokes and survival strokes. The PD for teachers, 
We are running a lot of additional PD opportunities at the moment in Term 1. And here you'll be able to find a selection of either attending a one-day workshop or you can attend a three-hour workshop. The three-hour workshops ranges from strokes, uh, pool sessions, games, flip a ball, uh, learning survival strokes, etc. If you find that there's something in there that um, doesn't quite work out with your timing and you would like a full staff professional development day, please feel free to get in touch with me and we may be able to work something out. The great thing about this tab is that you can actually register online. Questions and answers asked by parents. Today, parents are putting a lot of pressure onto schools, and no doubt you're feeling that. Not only do they want you to teach English and maths and science, but they also want you to teach competitive swimming. The reality is, statistically in Northland, 1% of school, primary school aged children are national swimmers. Therefore, we should be catering for the 99% that are not. So in my view, and this is my own personal view, is that we should be concentrating on water safety activities. Water safety is the fundamental, the foundation of learning to swim and survive. If I bring you back to a story, about six months ago I took a group of national swimmers across, uh, down to a lake to swim across. Not only were they upset and crying, the reason behind it all was because A, it was cold water, uh, there was no bulky to turn. When they put their face in the water, things were moving underneath. So in theory, are we really teaching the kids to be able to be water safe? Or are we just concentrating on getting them to swim at a certain time, at a certain distance? I believe with our program, the Top Energy Water Safe and Swim for Life program, we are really focusing on those water safety skills to then be able to give them a skill for life. We look at the statistics for drowning in New Zealand, or in Northland specifically. In 2011, we had zero drowning for school-aged children aged 5 to 24. It was huge. So you as teachers are doing a really good job. 2012, we've uh, just got our stats back, and unfortunately we had one drowning, which was over in the Kaipara area of a 14-year-old child. This year is today, uh, up to date now, is that we have still zero drowning in primary school aged children from 5 to 15. Unfortunately over the summer months um, we were unfortunate to have a drowning up in um, the Waitangi lily pond and that was an um, 18 year old Samoan boy. So apart from that we've also had zero Māori drownings in Northland to date for this year. The wonderful thing about that is that we are not even in the top five for drownings at the moment, which is a huge success for our program, but a huge success to you as teachers that you are doing a good job. So we just hope that we're making it easier for you to then be able to carry on the excellent teaching you're doing at the moment. So when we look at the common questions and answers, a lot of the time people will ask us and parents, how long will it take my child to learn to swim? It's impossible to determine how long a child will take to learn to swim. We look at how long did it take you to walk, how long did it take you to talk. Individuals. There's information there about what children should wear, um, and the biggest thing probably is about your swimming caps. The next tab is some good news stories. So as a regional sports trust, our funders are really wanting to get a, a full picture of what success their funding is achieving in Northland. So no matter how big or how small you think a success is within either when our instructors are in there or with you taking the classes, please let me know and we'll be able to work together to maybe create a, get a story organised so we can put it on the website. For example, we've had a success story where a child had a near drowning experience when they were younger. However, while they've been working with a top energy water safe instructor as well as the teachers, they were able to get that child in floating on the back. That's a huge success. That's 
something that our funders would love to know. The last one is probably one of my favourites. It's chat with Esther. Um, so no matter how big or how small you, question you have, as long as, it, as long as it has to do something with swimming or water safety, not rugby, then please feel free to use a chat with Esther. Obviously while I'm on the road quite a bit, it's, it probably makes it a lot easier to contact me, come straight to my phone and then I'm able to respond to you as soon as possible. So thank you for everything that you as teachers are doing. Thank you for supporting myself and our staff. Um, hopefully you're going to at least take one, one thing from the website for the school resources. Please, if you have any um, queries or you'd like us to attend a staff meeting, please feel free to get in touch with me. Thank you.